Hello and welcome to another episode of Conf T Bits, where we show you a demo or product feature in 10 minutes or less. All right, this one is going to be pretty in-depth and pretty specific, but I think it definitely warrants a video. So what we're going to be showing you today is how to do DHCP reservations on Firepower, specifically the, the Firepower 1010 or the virtual FTD devices. Uh, that's what we're, we're going to be using today for our demo. Um, it's a feature that was introduced into the backend code, uh, also known as Lena, um, about two years ago, but it hasn't made it to the GUI yet, which, you know, hopefully this video will uh, help encourage the Cisco developers to get that into the GUI because it is definitely a feature that a lot of our customers ask for, especially in the Firepower 1010 space where those boxes are primarily deployed in kind of a Soho environment. Um, so DHCP server has been in place for a while. We can do that with the GUI. Uh, we can take a look right now at my virtual FTD. <clears throat> we'll kind of go through kind of what we've already set up and how it's working. So you see here, uh, I've got my virtual FTD with my interfaces. I've got my WAN and LAN set up. Uh, this is important to note. This is the name of my LAN interface or my insight interface. It's going to come in handy later. But if we click on the DHCP tab, we can see that we're running a DHCP server on the LAN interface. And in this case, it's the 192.168.22.10 um, through 254. So if we go over to this VM, which is connected, it's got two NICs. Both are connected to the same network we can see that, of course, they're getting the first two IP addresses. And just to make sure this isn't some trickery, I'll go live and to look at it, and there you go, you can see .10. We'll also take note, of course, that we're gonna need this for the um, configuration here. We'll take note of these MAC addresses. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, see if I can leave these up here for now. And there we go, okay. <clears throat> now, what do I have over here? So this is going to be kind of our um, our way of kind of checking to make sure that everything's doing what we what we expect it to do. The way that we do DHCP reservations on Firepower is through FlexConfig. If you haven't used it before, uh, welcome to the club. This is my first time kind of messing with it, going through this, uh, checking to see if this was possible for a customer of mine. Um, FlexConfig is basically a way to interact with features that don't have a GUI. Um, method of, 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 of configuration yet. So what we're going to be doing here in the CLI, we're actually not going to be running any commands. This is not uh, necessary uh, for, you know, your implementation, but we're going to be using it just to kind of double check and make sure everything's working the way we expected it to. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to log in. We're going to go to run system support diagnostic CLI, which gets us into Lena. We're going to do enable, there's no password, and now we are in the Lena enabled prompt. And what I'm specifically looking for, by the way, if you do go in here, this is kind of a, a very advanced level skill. Be extremely careful with what commands you run in here. Do not try to run any show tech commands. It will take hours to run. Um, you know, very much don't go into this unless you're walked through it and, and doing it with tech. So just, you know, warnings out, out front. So what we want to do here is we want to do the show running config and we want to include anything that's DHCP. So I can see here I've got my, yep, here's my DHCP settings, which we can match here. Let me get out of that prompt. And we can see here, yep, this is my, these are my settings here, 10 through 254. Uh, DHCP server, here's my DNS server. I just have this thing, the one, everything's good to go. Very Again, very basic setup, but this is just to make sure that, hey, I'm, I'm not, I don't have any reservations yet. So how do we go about and actually create reservations? So the first thing we want to do is go into object management and go over to our flex config objects. Now, if you're going to be doing this for multiple devices at multiple uh, sites, right, where you're going to have, you know, one firepower device in one location, one firepower device in the other location, what you want to do is set one policy per that device. And you can have multiple um, reservations for, for multiple devices in that object. But because we're only doing one location or one uh, building here, we're just gonna do uh, this one here. So we're gonna call this uh, uh, lab DHCP 
And where do we, what do we want to type in here? What do we want to do? So first thing you want to know, you want to do insert. We want to do deployment once, not every time. And we want to uh, prepend. Now, <clears throat> this is going to seem very counterintuitive, but this will come in handy next time you want to make changes. The first line we're going to do, clear DHCPD binding all. I'll explain. You'll, you'll see why that's going to be important later when we go to add another device. So here's the actual reservation command. It's going to be DHCPD space reserve hyphen address. And we're going to put in the IP address that we want to reserve. So in this case, we're going to do uh, 192.168.22.110. That'll make sure that we're out of that, uh, that first one here. Then we're going to put in the MAC address of the first device we want to do. So in this case, I've got it right up here. It's going to be 0050.5681.cdfc. And remember how I said, keep note of the name of the interface that you want it to attach to. This is where you're going to put that in. So in this case, we are LAN and we are good to go. Actually, I'm just going to take this and there we go. Uh, okay, so just to confirm, DHCPD, reserve, address, 192.168.22.110, 0050.5681.cdfc, LAN. Okay, perfect. So we're going to go ahead and hit save. This object now exists. Now we need to go into the flex config policy and attach that, um, that, uh, that object that we just created. So we're going to go to devices, flex config, and we're going to create a new policy. Uh, again, we're going to call this one the lab DHCP reservation. And what devices are we going to be targeting? In this case, I have only one. Uh, but this is where we map that uh, that object uh, to the or this, this the policy that we're creating to the device. So when we come up here and we see up oh, there's some user defined one, you can see I was already messing with this. Here's the one that I created. We're just going to select it, and you'll see there's an arrow that shows up here, and we just click on it, and here it is. We can't edit this from here. We have to go into objects to make any edits. But of course, because it's a prepend, it's going to show up in this section up here. Um, that's it. We're going to go ahead and hit save and then we're going to go ahead and hit deploy. So now what this is going to do, oh, aha, almost forgot. When you're making changes to the flex config, you're going to get a validation warning. You're not going to get this every time you deploy because we're only deploying it once. You're only going to see this when either you're making changes or if you're doing some type of upgrades where it has to kind of go through and, and rerun that configuration. And all it's telling you is, Hey, just to let you know, flex config policies, they aren't really validated, so they may error out. And if we run that configuration and we get an error back from Lena, we're going to go ahead and, and fail that deployment. You're going to you know, have to have to change it. So we're just going to go ahead and hit, yep, that's good to go. So um, while that's deploying the policy, which should be pretty quick here, one of the things we're going to do here is I've only added this one uh, network uh, interface card here to my configuration. And that's so I can show you how to add another device later, uh, which unfortunately takes a little bit more work. Uh, and it's just because of the way that we have to do this through flex config. Again, hopefully this will be in the GUI soon and it won't matter. So um, looks like it completed. This is where we go back over to the FTD, uh, FTD and I'm going to rerun that command show running config include DHCP. And as you can see here, now we have the reservation right here. So we didn't have it before. Now we do. And if I go over to my client here and I do IP config release renew, this will take a couple seconds to, to run because of Microsoft. Um, it's going to go ahead and drop the, the existing uh, IP address, get a new one, and fingers crossed, it should be uh, 110 for that first uh, nick there that we went ahead and, um, and configured. So let's give this a couple seconds to run. And it's finally released, and it looks like it's going to go renew now. Drum roll. This is why we don't we don't do these. Uh, you know, we don't fluff these up. We just do them. We do them live. We'll see what what run into any problems as as they occur, right? <clears throat> While that's up, oh, here we go. All right, so here we go. Nick one one ten. That used to be ten. Awesome. Great. We're in good good shape. 
I'm going to bring this up here because I want to go ahead and um, add the second card now. So as I mentioned before, you don't you can have uh, I don't know if there's actually a limit, um, but you can have multiple devices on your um, flex config for DHCP reservations. Okay, so we're good there. We've got the one device reserved. Now we want to go ahead and make a change. We want to add a device. This is where it gets a little complicated, so make sure that you're following along and, of course, go back and rewind if you need to. So we're going to go back into object management because now we're editing the flex config object. We go back over to flex config object. We edit the one we created here. Uh, where is my lab one? Down here. All right. This is where this command... Have, staying on the top makes sense. So the first thing we're going to do is actually type in the word no and space and then save this and redeploy. Now why are we doing this? Well, if I just added one more um, item to the list, the way I could do it easier would be just to add the, add the IP address or add the MAC address, IP address command, hit deploy, and be good to go. The problem is, is that you're not going to know what devices you still um, have set up and which devices are not because your flex config object is going to look different than what the actual Lena code shows. So what I'm doing first is removing that line so that I can rerun the command with that line in it and the second line. It just helps keep things a little bit better organized so that your flex config object actually matches what is running on your you know in your um, on your box and I think it's probably just the best way to do it so we're gonna go ahead and show our running config and we can see that that is no longer there okay great now we're gonna go back into our object management mm hmm Come on. This is this is the uh, the double-edged sword of doing it live, folks. No smoke and mirrors here. All right, flex config object. We're gonna go back into our lab DHCP object. We're gonna clear this no, and just just for simplicity, I'm just gonna take this line and copy and paste it down here, and I'm going to make a few changes here. So we're gonna change this one here to a two. And let's see, we've got 00, 00505681, and we're just changing the last four, which I expected, and that's going to be 1BA8. Okay. And we hit save. And again, the reason we do this is because now this is going to match what is running on the box itself. We go ahead and hit deploy, deploy all, validation warnings. Yep, we know that. That's good. And we'll let it we'll let it run. It's not completed yet. It's just got to refresh that screen. There we go. And again, this should be pretty quick. Uh, there's not a lot of policies running on this particular um, on this particular box because it's just a test environment. And then what we'll do when we uh, see that it's completed, we'll rerun again just to show that it's actually running the the proper command. Um, and we will see that. Yep, there we go. I've got two. DHCP reservations. I will go ahead and do release renew on that device. And because this takes a few minutes, I'm going to go on to the next thing and we can double check back to make sure that it's looking the way it's supposed to, which I expect it to. Now, I've shown you how to go ahead and add DHCP reservations. I've shown you how to go ahead and modify DHCP reservations. Now, let's show you how to delete either a single DHCP reservation or um, the entire policy altogether because just removing that flex config policy from that device is not going to actually remove the commands, right? We still have to run the no lines first. So the easiest way to do this is just basically what we were doing before with the no commands, um, but just doing it multiple times. So, or for multiple lines. So as you can see here, I've got uh, both NICs here have the right addresses now and we're good to go. Now, again, I want to go ahead and delete these devices, remove them. You have to go through the process of typing in no. And then what I usually end up doing is taking this clear command 
and putting it at the bottom. Now, the reason I don't I put it at the top when I'm adding them is obviously if I'm creating the bi the the reservations, the last command that runs after it, I don't want to say clear the bindings because that's just not going to work. I run clear bindings first so that when I do remove an object, the first line that's run um, is, hey, clear clear the bindings so that this policy will now apply correctly. So because we're moving, we're removing everything now, we're going to move this clear DHCP binding all down to the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. We're going to go ahead and hit deploy. I'm going to get a validation warning again, and it's deploying. Now, while that's running, I want to touch on one more thing. Um, upgrading devices to different versions, right? So I built this configuration originally in 7.0.3, upgraded to 7.0.4, and then upgraded to 7.2.1, and the everything worked just the way it's supposed to. I did get the validation warnings on my first deployment after the boxes were upgraded, the uh, FTD boxes were upgraded. However, um, the configure the reservation command still existed throughout the entire process. So what I would do is check to make sure that that um, th this configuration still existed and it did. So we didn't lose anything there. Uh, everything worked just as just as expected. So again, we've removed the DHCP reservations. We can see they're no longer there. Um, I'm not going to bother messing with the endpoint because, you know, it's going to hold on to its IP address for a certain number of hours, and uh, we'll just that's going to be too difficult to replicate at this time. But I've gone ahead and um, I've gone ahead and removed the DHCP reservations, and then I can go over to Devices Flex Config, and if I wanted to to remove that. Um, that policy from the um, completely remove the policy from the device. I can go ahead and just go into policy assignments, hit delete. I've removed the policy from the device. Uh, yes, and this is this is the error that's telling you, hey, unassigning the flex config doesn't actually remove the configuration. But we had to do that manually, which we've already done. So hit yes on this and save and one more deploy. And then I can go ahead and delete the uh, flex config policy altogether. And I can go ahead and also delete the flex config object. So that is start to finish and back again, how to add DHCP reservations, how to modify, which also would include removing, and of course, completely remove the policy altogether from your environment. Uh, again, hopefully this becomes an object, uh, something that can, is configurable within the GUI sooner than later. But for now, for our customers and our users that require this feature, it is uh, working and it's, it's a, a good way to be able to implement this uh, for those uh, devices that need um, static IP addresses without actually setting a static IP address. I hope you found this informational and helpful. Please be sure to like and subscribe and check out our podcast. Hopefully we'll be getting back to recording these soon. Uh, it's a lot of stuff's been going on. We'll make sure to clue you in on the next episode. But... Thank you as always for watching and uh, don't forget to say that. Continue.